Hey everyone, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. I had a customer that wanted an elegant look of a, a version of a Calicata marble, and I added some really, really cool undertones that really set this piece off, with the main focal point just being a couple uh, darker veins that are going through it. So as I begin this project, I have the boards uh, prepped, uh, two coats of uh, stone coat undercoat, and sanding in between coats. Now what I'm doing with all of my projects, I will fog the edges. I'll make sure to get the rounded edge and then also uh, the drop edge because that's where the resin is gonna be the thinnest and the most transparent. And so I want some color to be able to show through there in those areas. So I'm using a stone gray and then I'm also using a pearl mist, both by uh, Rust-Oleum spray paints. Then I'm also gonna be using uh, dark charcoal as well. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of laying out the the flow of how my uh, design is going to go and again that's just something that keeps me on track throughout the project. And so I had two similar countertops. One I put down a wash coat, the other one I did not. I wanted to see if it was necessary. So on this piece um, I'm applying a wash coat and I can get by with about one half ounce per square foot because I want all I want to do is basically get the board wet with resin and that helps when I pour the colors out it just helps them to flow. I want to note also that when I do apply a wash coat I do apply that to my edges as well because I have fogged my edges as the epoxy starts to flow over in runs uh, I don't want it to cause streaks from the spray paints that I have fogged. And so it eliminates that and makes a really big difference on uh, the final result. So right now the colors I've mixed up are white metallic, pearl metallic. I mixed mother of pearl and interference oyster satin. And then also I used a pearl shimmer. And what's important for me that I discovered is when I'm using this technique, uh, as you'll see when I pour the colors out, I'm not necessarily going uh, in even lines. I, I'm pouring it out more randomly, some heavy on some ends, thinner on some ends. And so once I meld these colors, it eliminates those, those tiger stripes, if you will, or that candy cane effect. Um, it just makes sure that uh, I've got a lot of visual interest throughout the whole piece. Uh, it doesn't look all uniform all the way across. And so what happened on this piece, since I did not put down a wash coat, it's not flowing and it's not going to flow as well. So I actually needed to mix up um, another 32 ounces just to make sure I was going to be able to get adequate coverage uh, all across the surface. So once I get all the colors down, then I'm just basically, I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna melt all of those colors together. Um, what I've also mixed up is a small cup of, I used deep silver metallic and I added some black metallic to it just to darken it up just a little bit and kind of give it a little bling kick. Um, and I noticed later on in the video, once I meld all these out, I apparently had poured those veins and I didn't get it recorded, but you'll, you'll see that when we get to it. And so now I'm getting the rest of uh, the resin colors put down and the mother of pearl in interference oyster, oyster satin uh, is the bling that the customer was asking for. And so when I pour that out, I'm not pouring it out strategically, but obviously I'm pouring that out in uh, the, the voided areas or the areas where I don't have any resin. Now I'm simply using my hand. I'm keeping the direction of the flow the same. So again, everything is going to flow together and I really don't want to mix all of my colors together, but as I'm melding, I do want to take some color into another color just a little bit, again, so you don't see a complete contrast from one color to the next. To me, this is really what offers a lot of that visual interest, makes it look more natural, and, and takes away those lines between the colors, if you will. So now I'm taking my torch, and I'm torching out the bubbles. I'm also looking for any uh, surface tension and what this also is doing is heating up the resin which is also helping it flow and just being patient and giving it time 
things will really start to flow together and really meld together uh, really nicely. So here again I apologize but I did take that silver metallic that I had mixed up and just poured uh, thin veins uh, across the project and then used my hand to soften those and to uh, meld those in and again to make them look a little bit more natural. Um, heating up the project again, um, keep it moving and also pop any remaining air bubbles that may be in there. And then I took my heat gun just to soften up those lines a little bit. All I want to do is move those just enough to make them look a little bit more organic. I'm really not moving them that much. I'm just kind of widening some areas um, and just opening up some areas to, to give it that more natural look. Um, that's basically all I did with this process. Uh, it's, a, it's a very simple process. Oh, here, I'm, yeah, I decided to spray a little bit of 99% clear isopropyl alcohol along those veins, uh, and that really helped open those up a little bit and give them a more organic look. And now I'm taking my stir stick, and you can see I'm not using any paint on it or anything, but by running some veins in there with just a stir stick, moves the metallics around and uh, really adds some uh, really cool effects. Here's the final product after applying the Ultimate Top Coat and turned out fabulous. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.